Alright, All right, ready? Hit, 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 hit. Nice. I don't know why you're what's resting it. Hey, what's going on YouTube? In this video, I demonstrate components of my rifle shooting technique that allow me to manage recoil and get subsequent shots on target. For safety consideration, all rifles used in this video have been safety checked, chambers empty, bolt locked to rear, and safety is on, and there is not a single round of live ammunition on my body. We can talk all day about muzzle brakes, gas system lanes, buffer weights, and spring tension, but all of that is second to practice and technique. Those clips that I got in the beginning of the video were from me being out of the tactical shooting game for more than a year with childcare and associated household duties necessitating that some of my hobbies take a backseat, but you also saw that my gross motor control skills also carried over. There's two components of rifle recoil. The first is the rearward force of the rifle in the action cycling, and the second is the muzzle climb. To offset the rearward force of the rifle, we're going to be getting into an athletic stance. We're not facing the target straight on, nor are we side facing the target like in a high power position. Rather, we're going to be facing relative to the target at a one o'clock position with our shoulders and our pelvis square one o'clock relative to the target. Then we're going to drop down into a stance not unlike that of a Muay Thai fighter or a boxer. We're going to be bending our knees to where we're almost in a quarter squat position, I would say, and then your weight is going to be more so on the balls of your feet in a shoulder width position. Almost no weight is going to be on your heels. And then head down, lean in to where your center of gravity has a slight forward bias. If you feel like you're an inch away from toppling over, then you're in the correct position to better manage recoil. To where you're on autopilot and then the recoil control is instinctual and automatic. Your body is naturally pushing forward to oppose the rearward recoil. If you do have to aim at a target that is 30 degrees away from your center point of aim, then that's at the point where I would be moving my feet. So your fighting stance is going to be a lot stronger of a position than if you were to stand rigid in an isosceles position, square on at the target, because if you think about it, standing just like this, one strong gust of wind can knock you over. And it's compounded by the recoil force and having to reposition and reacquire your target. So the philosophy for the rest of the video is going to be modifying your rifle to fit your stance instead of compromising your stance to accommodate the rifle. So what are we doing with our elbow? Well, we're not flaring it out like a chicken wing. We're tucking it in closer to our body at a 45 degree angle to reduce our shooter silhouette. Now that is made a lot more difficult with the M16A2 style grip that still comes standard on many off the rack cash and carry rifles. Now, if you think back to when the M16 was originally introduced, there was still a high power philosophy or pedagogy within the shooting disciplines that were taught. And a lot of generals at the time were still married to the M14. Almost nobody wanted the M16 to be a direct replacement to the M14. But to have more success with the elbow's modern down shooting presentation, you want to have a grip with a more vertical angle like this Magpul K2 grip or with this BCM grip. What are we doing with our shooting hand? We're getting as high up onto the pistol grip as we can. There should be almost no gap between your middle finger and the trigger guard wrapping around our thumb so that we can easily reach the controls. Now you don't have to grip this as hard as you think you do because all of the positive control can come from your non-shooting hand or your off hand. And I'm pulling the rifle tight into my body because if you were to hold your rifle loosely away from you, the rifle when it recoils is gonna kick up against you, see? But if you were to hold your rifle tight into your shoulder, the rifle is gonna move with you as though it were almost an extension of your body. That's another underlying philosophy of this video is a rifle is an extension of your body. Components of your trigger squeeze are gonna be the exact same as if you were to do bench rest or precision shooting. You wanna consciously feel for the break, be married to the sear, and also consciously feel for the reset. Feel for the break, married to the sear, feel for the reset. 
for stock positioning, you wanna be as center line to your body as much as possible to get a correct cheek well for proper sight picture. Stock length, however, is gonna depend a lot on individual anatomy. Having your stock too far forward, you're gonna to have to scrunch up a lot more than is comfortable. But another consideration for stock length is the positional shooting that you'll be doing. My ACOG and my Vortex Razor are on exact co-witness mounts, so they're on the same plane as the iron sight. And with this position, I can collapse the stock further and still be comfortable while shooting prone. So your optic height placement and stock length are gonna be dependent on the type of shooting that you'll be doing, whether it's from standing, kneeling, barricade, prone, or the foxhole fighting position. So the next component of recoil control muzzle climb is managed by your off hand or your non-shooting hand. Some of you may have been here for this, a lot of you are not, but coinciding with the popularity of Magpul's original angled foregrip, a lot of tactical trainers were doing a super over the top, thumb over bore, clam style grip, and that made for exciting and effective marketing, but the real world practicality was suspect because in this position, you do get a lot of recoil mitigation because of the amount of torque you're able to exert at the muzzle. Again, basic physics, and you could transition quickly in between targets. But the disadvantage to this type of over top seat clamp grip was a loss of precision because you had a tendency to overcorrect when changing between targets. And also having your arm straight out like this was very straining at times. But what if we move our hands a lot closer to a magwell grip, almost like that of a high power stance grip? This position is easy to maintain for a long period of time and you can get a lot of precision because of how close your hands are together. However, you don't have a lot of control over the muzzle and the angular forces of the muzzle climb are gonna be difficult to control for subsequent shots. A better balance between the two types of grips, the C-clamp grip and the magwell grip, is going to be somewhere in the middle. So we're gripping almost exactly around the gas block on a 16 inch barrel with mid lane gas system. Yes, I know it's a gas block, it'll get hot, we'll talk about that. But this grip is a perfect balance between precision, control, and sustainability. You can have your thumb over bore or at a one o'clock position, your hands in a natural pointing position, and compared to a complete at the muzzle C-clamp grip, your arm isn't fully extended. Now think about your fully extended arm as a spring that is completely stretched out and think of an arm with a slight bend into it as a spring that has yet to compress. Which one of those do you think is better at managing recoil? But as handguards have gotten thinner and holier, you are getting a lot closer to your hot barrel and more importantly, you're getting closer to your gas block. And if you ever shot a piston gun like the Scar L, then you know you can even feel a little bit of puffs of gas coming out of the gas block. By the end of your second magazine on a hot summer day, you really can't grip this far forward without using gloves. Do you need attachments at all? That was always one of the advantages of the original quad rail style handguard in that they made excellent heat guards and heat sinks. You can run a forward grip without any attachments running it slick and even with this fixed front sight post, I'm able to get my thumb into a one o'clock position on my rail for instinctual pointing. But additional attachments like the Emissary Arms handbrake will just make it easier for you. Now, if you really want to tilt the internet, use your vertical grip as an actual vertical grip, holding it like this. This way you get the worst of both worlds. You don't get any of the muzzle control and you don't get any spatial awareness or proprioceptive benefits of holding your hand closer to the barrel. There's plenty of drills that you can do just to practice this technique at home. You can go from a completely standing position to high ready and then get into your athletic stance. Repeat. Yeah. You can just do that around your living room with a properly safety gun, of course. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Have some fun with this and be safe. across your hand. Yeah, you don't want to grab it too far forward.